And now we're taking another hundred year stride through history. And this is Hampton Court, home to the most famous of all English kings. We're talking overweight. We're talking Tudor. We're talking six wives. Exactly, Henry VIII. And how does Henry fit into this story we're telling, this story of power and of how people were ruled in England? Well, I'll tell you. Do you remember the Becket story? Henry II takes on the power of the church and Becket ends up dead on the cathedral floor. Well, 400 years later, his namesake, Henry VIII, took on the power of the church again. And this time, he won. By 1528, Henry had been married to Catherine of Aragon for 20 years but he fancied Anne Boleyn, her lady-in-waiting. To divorce Catherine, he needed the permission of the church, which was controlled, remember, by the Pope in Rome. And the Pope refused. What happened next was that Anne Boleyn gave Henry a book, and it was a banned book. It was illegal even to possess it. It was written by a man called William Tyndale. Tyndale criticized the Pope. He dreamt of a new kind of Christianity that would sweep away the power of the earthly church and simply get back to people worshiping God with no church in between. And this book planted a seed in Henry's mind because he realized if there was no Pope, he could get his divorce. And so just because Henry wanted to marry his mistress, the church in England split from the Church of Rome. This is Revo in Yorkshire, one of numerous abbeys, monasteries, priories, closed down in what's now known as the Reformation. It was all perfectly legal. Henry went to Parliament and he was declared the supreme head of the English church and he set to work destroying the church's earthly power. And most of the MPs went along with it because they, like Tyndale, mistrusted the power and wealth of the church but also the church had land. There was a killing to be made here, carving up the church's lands. The Reformation was the greatest land grab since the Norman conquest. And with all this new land, the power of the landed gentry in the 16th century rose yet further. But what made the Reformation so exciting was its impact on ordinary people. I've come to St. Michael's in Copford Green in Essex, not just to admire these magnificent wall paintings, but to show you this. It's a rood screen, not R-U-D-E, rood, but R-O-O-D. And in churches before the Reformation, screens like this separated the people who sat down there from the altar. Only the priest could approach the altar because remember, the church taught that only through the church, through the priests, could the people be with God. And the Reformation tore down these barriers between God and the people. And for the first time, people came to believe there was nothing separating them from God. God was with them. And this idea filled them with energy. It gave them hope. And another thing that happened with the Reformation, Bibles, for the first time, were printed in English. Before then, they'd all been in Latin. And when people came to read the Bible for themselves, what did they find? Wonderful stories of a man called Jesus, who came to give hope not to the rich, but the poor. And stories of bad kings punished by God. So yes, the Reformation made Henry more powerful, but he had opened a can of worms. <laughs>